This is the March 3, 2022 meeting of the Rockport Planning Board. All members are present. Um, and as per our agenda, we begin our meetings with a public comment period and end our meetings with a public comment period. So we'll start with the first public comment period. Uh, if anybody out in the audience uh, or attendees has any comments about Planning issues, now's one of the two times you can raise them. We don't have, our, our agenda today is not, we don't have any specific applications on the agenda. We just have a couple of administrative things to talk about um, later on. So any public comments, now is one of the times you can give them. Uh, I don't know if anybody has their hand raised, Kelsey, but if they do, you know. Yes, first I have, Toby, you're unmuted, Toby. Thank you, Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Uh, I see Jim Gardner is also on. Uh, at the last DPW commissioners meetings, it was said that they expected or hoped to get the uh, sewer capacity pumping study before the town meeting. At the time, the town meeting was to be uh, April 2nd. The, the annual spring town meeting. Uh, I was told at the last selectman's meeting that that's not likely to, to be the case and that I misheard it. Can you uh, get to the bottom of that with uh, Mr. Gardner? Uh, another subject, at the selectman's meeting it was said that all of your zoning articles are now to be put off to the 16th and 17th of May, that you've agreed to that uh, and that Part of the reason for this, according to Mr. Visnick, is that the Board of Appeals uh, will have a chance to review the articles with you. Uh, I'm incredulous. Uh, you were vehement that the public hearing was properly announced uh, fair and square in every regard. As you know, I don't agree. Certainly it was held uh, with four people present, including the building inspector and nobody from the Board of Appeals. And uh, are you now going to go back and start all over again for their benefit? Um, and how does that square with usual procedure? And if you are going to make substantial changes on their behalf or at their request, are you then going to hold another public hearing for those to be reviewed? Uh, all fair questions. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, they are. And I'll just answer them pretty uh to the point will be, um, and this will be discussed later in our meeting, but there will be no additional public hearings. There are gonna be no changes, regardless of whether there's a meeting with the ZBA or not. There are gonna be no changes to the uh, bylaws that were completed after the two public hearings that we had. Um, in uh, January, with the exception if there are any obvious typographical or numbering orders, numbering, um, if things were numbered incorrectly, if there are things in, that are typographical or simply don't make sense, like we had the Board of Appeals in one section, we had the Board of Appeals and the Planning Board, both being the Special Permit Authority, obviously that had to be cleared up but other than things like that, there are not gonna be any substantive changes um, regardless of whether there's a meeting with the ZBA or not. The, if, it, if there is such a meeting, it's gonna be informational only. And um, no, we, I agree with you. We've had a public hearing. People like you and others have commented. We've taken to those comments to heart. MAPC has done, uh, it's performed as per its contract by giving us a set of final bylaws and that's kind of the story. Does that answer your question? It does, it does. I hope you hold to it the three minutes when you get to the uh, Board of Appeals. Okay. I'm reminded of Animal Farm. All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Okay. All right, um, thank you for your comment. I'm glad you cleared that up or let, let, let me clear it up. Uh, any other public comments? I do. Uh, Jim Gardner, you're unmuted. Uh, thanks. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, so to answer Toby's question, um, 
So we had engaged a firm and asked them, asked to see if they could um, answer a number of questions about uh, our ability to handle additional development. And the questions we had for them uh, looked at both water capacity and sewer capacity. Well, uh, Jim, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. Um, are you talking about something done recently? I, I yes, we, so when, when it was clear that the planning board was going to come forward at the Springtown meeting with these zoning changes, we anticipated that people would ask whether the zoning changes could result in development, in additional development and how much additional development the town could handle with regard to both water and sewer. And so we are trying to get a study done prior to Springtown meeting that would help answer that. Okay. Um, well, that, you know, that would be something that if, if, in, if you have any information about that, um, that would be probably something we want to put on our agenda as an item rather than just bringing it up in a comment period. Um, you know, unless you have, unless you've said all you needed to say, uh, that would be something we'd be very interested in, since it's directly related to. Well, I, I don't have any answers yet, but to answer Toby's question, I can tell, I'm, I'm just trying to answer Toby's question. Well, don't, you know what? I don't know if answering Toby's question as if you're not on the planning board, this is the right time to do that. Uh, I think we talk, okay. this is something that we'll need to talk about in more detail later, uh, because then this becomes an, you know, a dialogue between you and Toby, which you really- right, Well, all right, but then I, I also have some questions of the planning board. Well, then that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, so with regard to the, um, the study that we are trying to get accomplished, um, the, I'm just curious whether the planning board uh, has any sense of whether the average occupancy of Rockport is going up or going down. We know, for example, that um, we've added bedrooms. We have more bedrooms in town than we did 10 years ago, but we also know that our year round population is dropping. So, you know, we have uh, trends going in opposite directions. And I don't know if the planning board has done any analysis to try to determine whether on average, occupancy of Rockport is trending up or trending down. That's the first question. I don't know how we would, you know, get, when you say occupancy, um, you know, the, 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 the and, uh, Jason, you, can, Jason, may I take a crack at this? Who is this? Harry. Harry, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say these are, these are numbers that are very, very difficult to, to arrive at. Um, and the increase in bedrooms could be a simple function of people wanting bigger houses and nothing to do with... No, I, I totally agree. I, I'm just asking whether you guys had, had taken a look at that or not. That's all well, I'm, I, I'm... I'm not aware of anything. Harry, do you have... Something to add? No, I, I was I was going to say that number one, I'm not even sure that that's really within our purview because we're we're talking about zoning matters. But beyond that, um, it was Tom Mickus who sent out some information earlier this week regarding MAPC, and I'm not going to call it a census, but um, they've estimated that the population of Rockport for fiscal 2023 is going to be uh, something like 6,992 compared to a population of 7,282 in fiscal year 22. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if, if Tom has any, any further comments on that because it was, I believe at that meeting, but it just points to further decline in the uh, population of, of Rockport for I suspect a number of different reasons we may all be somewhat familiar with. Right, but that, I mean, I presume that those are year round population figures and wouldn't necessarily include people who are here on a temporary basis. These are referred to as the Department of Revenue net population. 
But that doesn't that doesn't translate to occupancy, Harry. Well, it must have some relevance. Well, well, well look, let's just say this, because I think we can all agree that the population of Rockport, and I think there's no information out there to the contrary, has either stayed at the level that it's at now or has declined. I don't think anybody can seriously say that there's any support for the position that the population of Rockport has increased in the last five years in any significant way. Well, we know the census went up 40 people in 10 years. Yeah, 40 people in 10 years. Okay. And, you know, 40 people is almost a rounding error. I think the question that Jim is going to be asked to answer is when we talk about the village overlay district, the state guidelines are that we should provide 750 more units, get to that point in the next five to 10 years. So that's a reasonable thing to see if we could handle that. Well, you know, right. All right. So, I mean, I, so I guess the answer is that you have not tried to determine. No, we haven't. We haven't. And, and as Harry said, Jim, that we could gather, we could maybe get that information from somewhere else. I don't know exactly where, other than, you know, uh, the census and, you know, the number of units. That's not, I mean, I, we don't need to dwell on it. I, I was just curious whether you yeah, guys well, have done anything. The answer any, is no. We, don't, we haven't done anything independently to bear it to do to figure that out okay All right so my second question then is have you determined how many properties could qualify to add an accessory dwelling unit no okay and then my third question is does a studio apartment qualify as an accessory dwelling unit I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. Could, and it couldn't. The, <laughs> I mean, the definition, yeah, I mean, circumstances, I suppose it could. The definition of an accessory dwelling unit is contained in the draft bylaws, which are available on the website, Jim. Right, but I, I don't have them in front of me, but I mean, you guys wrote them, so I'm just curious. Does an accessory dwelling unit have to have a bedroom? I guess is the question. To have a bedroom? Yes. A to being a studio apartment? Is that what you're saying? Right. So technically, a studio apartment does not have a bedroom. Okay. So all, all I know is accessory dwelling unit can be, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't have the regulate the law in front of me either, or the proposed law, is that it can't be any more than 900 square feet. How, how that is configured, um, I'm not sure there are any limitations. So in other words, you, as long as if it's a studio apartment could then potentially qualify as an accessory dwelling. Uh, you know what? I don't have it committed to memory either, Jim. So I would yeah. go back and look at the uh, proposed bylaw just as you would. So, I mean, that's my answer. It, it may, but I'm not, I wouldn't say for sure until I read it again. Okay. Jason, there was a minimum square footage too. You know, there may be, but again, Tom, you know, like it's all there. <laughs> if you want to take, anybody wants to take a look at it, it's the, the proposed bylaw is what it is. And um, if I knew we were going to be talking about it tonight, I'd certainly have it in front of me, but I don't. I'm sorry. So um, anything else from Jim? Are you done? No, that, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone, uh, Kelsey, is there anybody else with their hand up? I do still have Toby with his hand up, but that's Toby. all. I'm Toby. Toby, yeah, we, let's, uh, we're, we're each person's entitled to one comment per session. So we have this, we have the one at the end of the meeting and Toby can comment then. All right, if, that, if there are no more comments, then let's move on to the uh, approval of the December 16 minutes. And um, this, uh, I don't know if anybody's reviewed them. Do we have any additions, deletions, or changes? Nothing from me. Nor from me. Okay. On the, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Go hey, ahead, Peter. On the page, uh, I'm trying to see what page it is. I guess two. It says here, our, we talked about the transit-oriented district, and we and it says this district is set at 50 acres. Where um, are you? I'm sorry, third paragraph down, middle of the paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't say that. We talked about the fact that the guidelines, which weren't formal yet, were requesting a minimum of 50 acres, but we never said what our, we didn't say our district was 50 acres. No, our district isn't 50. You're correct. And so maybe what we should do is say, um, you say district say, guidelines or for the draft guidelines. Yeah. District is, um, because they're only draft, and I'll, I'll address that later. I have a couple of items to talk about. Plus, we have five years, I think, to sort of have a plan to grow. Yeah. And, and again, th those guidelines could change. Uh, there's, there's a comment period that ends March 30, and um, there are going to be a lot of comments about that. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't think it should read that we were already. No, no, no. I agree with you. That's, that's correct. That will be changed. I also think that parenthetical statement of lots under five acres are not included within this 50 acre total. I don't think that's accurate. I don't remember that. Lots under five acres. I mean, maybe it was sub-districts or districts. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand what that means either. Um, take it out. Just take yeah, it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. I say Shaw states that the adjustments to this bylaw draft by members need to be submitted to MAPC immediately. Um, Any edits, you know, we need to get that information. Yeah, okay. That's a lot. All right. Um, I have a couple things when you're done with that. On this. Uh, on the minutes, Tom? Yeah, on the minutes. Yeah, go uh, I'm Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, the second paragraph on page two, the motion that I made. All right, motion. Okay. It was for ocean, oceanfront applicants, not all applicants. To oceanfront. Okay. We're not trying to enforce this everywhere in town and it got withdrawn anyhow. Okay. So change that. And then right above that, the end of the last, the last sentence in the paragraph above that, the hedges referenced are acting as fences between properties that are offset from the house. That's a little bit out of place because it refers back to the beginning of that paragraph and in between you're talking about ADUs. And also, I think somebody did say that, but we also, my concern was about the, the hedges that are at, at the street blocking the view, not fences between the properties so much. Yeah, I mean, did you even, did somebody even say that? I think we were talking about, it's between one house and the next house is blocking the view. Because the houses are already blocking the view where the houses are. We're uh, probably referring to the 11 Beach. At, uh, so are you, I, I think just to pick up on what Peter said, are we talking about fences that, that span from the house to the adjoining house on, a, on an adjoining property versus, you know, hedges that are kind of parallel to the lot lines? I, I, I don't really understand. I don't understand the statement. I don't even know, frankly, why it even needs to be there. Let's just take it out. It is confusing because it's uh, it's yeah. going to get into some things that are too complicated. Yeah. Okay. And then a minor change in that paragraph, the second line, uh, the property owner would understand that they care on notice. I think that means they are on notice. Wait, this is the same paragraph we just... Yeah, second, second line. line. Second line from the top on page two. Second word from the end has a C that shouldn't be there. Are on notice? Yeah, not that they care on notice. Right. Well, they might care, but they are too. Okay. And penultimately, 
I think Kolachowski is spelled wrong on page three. Isn't it uh, K-O-L-A-C-H, not K-O-L-A-C-K? Okay, wait a second. I, I haven't checked that. It just looked wrong. Yeah, I'll just put down spelling question. Yeah, one. check the spelling on that. And finally, uh, you got an, a middle initial up in the uh, top, top of the first page. I don't know if you want that there. Jason Elshaw. Well, that is my middle initial. Okay, well, everybody use a middle initial, but I don't have one. I don't know how it got there, but it is mine. Okay, not an error. Is that offensive? I'll take it. No, out. I'm just looking for symmetry. Okay, I'll take it out then. No, I don't want to be the only one using a middle initial. I feel slighted because I don't have one. Finito. Okay. No mas. Uh, well, that was fun with that. Um, oh, these pages are numbered, by the way, at the bottom right. So uh, with that being said, is there a motion to accept the December 16, 2021 minutes with the um, uh, changes that um, I'll make that motion subject to the amendments? Safe, uh, second. Seconded uh, made by Harry, seconded by Tom. Uh, roll call vote, Denise. Aye. Um, Aye. Peter. Aye. Mary. Aye. I'll vote in favor. 5 0 with changes. Okay. All right. And then I know Kelsey's going to work very hard to get us those other minutes next week, so which is great. Okay. Um, item three. <laughs> So uh, I'll just tell you how this happened. Um, and I've actually polled everybody individually about the, this, you know, whether this is a change in our meeting would be, uh, the town meeting for our bylaws would be acceptable. And I, I believe everyone was in a, one agreement that it would be. But um, we, I did meet, uh, last, before I went away on vacation with um, our town administrator and with Bob Viznick to talk about how, you know, the warrant is going to, how the bylaws are going to be structured within the warrant, which was, you know, a problem because they have the three new bylaws that were, you know, that the new ones that are subject to the a majority vote only, and then we have the changes to the existing bylaws, which would be subject to the uh, um, you know, regular two thirds majority. So uh, one, it wasn't me, but one of the two of them came up with the ideas. Why don't we have, they were very concerned about the length of the meeting uh, with, with our bylaws in it, our hundred, essentially hundred pages on top of everything else that was going to be considered and the length of the material that was going to have to be submitted to the people who attend the April meeting. And it was proposed that there be a special meeting, special town meeting to consider just the zoning uh, amendments and that that special town meeting be in, um, in May. So, uh, Hence, you know, my questioning of all the members, I think there was, um, a con there was a unanimous consensus that that was um, a good idea. And I actually confirmed that today with Chris Cushel, our consultant who thought it was a good idea. So basically everybody thinks that segregating our piece out is a good idea for a bunch of reasons. And I, I don't really need to go into those right now, but it just would have been maybe too much to have on one town meeting, too long, too complicated. And so since that time, the um, Board of Selectmen, as Toby alluded to earlier at their last meeting this, this uh, week, have determined to, I, I think it's more specific than 
16th or 17th at this point. I think it's actually on the 16th, which is, I believe, a Monday, that to have a special town meeting on the 16th, it would obviously be in the evening because that's a weekday, to cover just the zoning bylaw changes. And um, I, you know, I'm okay with that. I think everybody else is okay with that. I don't know if any of you have any additional thoughts, but I think having the, the meeting, you know, on April, whatever it is, 2nd or 4th, would be a real, real marathon session. And, and you know, I don't think we could give the, de you know, the detail and attention to our bylaws which are due because it would just be so darn long and, you know, people are just going to get tired and cranky and, you know, they want it to be over. So. How I many just, individual uh, votes did you wind up with? Is it no, four separate packages? I don't think they voted on it. I think they, they wanted to find out before they voted on it, whether the school would be available on that day for, for a, because it is going to be in the school auditorium or one of the rooms. Uh, I don't. I don't think they voted on it because they're waiting to hear. I believe that since then, it's been determined that it is available on the 16th, and that's going to be the day. So, you know, it gives us a little more breathing room. Not that we need a little more breathing room, but it gives us a little more breathing room, and also you know, allows us to individually outreach to people who might need to know more about this, to direct them to the website or, or other locations uh, to read more about it. So that that's really all I have under item three. I don't know if anybody else has any, if anybody else has any discussion or wants to talk about this. No. Um, that's kind of where we are. Well, those are weekdays. Monday and Tuesday, so if the, if it goes long, it's going to be late. Not, yeah. like start, not like starting on a Saturday morning. No, I know, but if, right, but if we if we I, I I guess the idea of doing it on a weekend was not a popular with the board of selectmen. Right. You know, if I had my brothers, yeah, would I say Saturday morning would be a better time? But yeah. at the same time, I wouldn't want to be doing it. At, Five o'clock on a Saturday, where you've had eight hours of, you know, stuff before us, that would be pretty bad too. So that's be worse, maybe. I think we are where we are. Yeah, exactly. There's really not. I, I think to to insist that it be in April would be uh, could be a mistake for us and for the public, you know. There was also a sentiment among the selectmen to not move it to June. That was uh, what Bob Viznick originally came in with. He said, you need a couple more months and uh, that'll give plenty of time for the ZBA. And how about June? And that got pushed back by the selectmen as well. Yeah, well, that that's a whole other issue that I'm ready to talk about pretty soon <laughs> under public, under member items, because I did not, not want to move it to June. And I let that was a surprise to me. Uh, and I let from 35,000 feet up, I was traveling in an, you know, across the country. And I fortunately got emails uh, and I let it be known that June was not an option. There's no reason to push this to June. So that's kind of where we are. Unless anybody has anything else to say, we'll move to member items. I All have right. a couple of things. I have a few, you have a few things? I do. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Tom, because I'll, I'll. Okay, uh, Long Beach Options Committee met yesterday and reviewed a draft report. Got input from the members and uh, sufficient to conclude that we don't need to meet again as a committee, other than to have our meeting with the, the townsfolk, which would be two weeks before Springtown meeting. 
So we're planning to meet on March 19th, um, tentatively at 11 a.m., just to be confirmed by Mitch. And this would be for whoever public wants to attend and, and uh, give comments about the, uh, the report that we've drafted. And then uh, the next item would be it comes to a town meeting to be voted for acceptance or not. Now, where is the report? Where can one view it? Not yet public. And when it is? It will be hard copies in the, I think they said clerk's office or out in the hallway in town hall and town hall annex. And I think they're gonna go for the library for hard copies also posted on, on the uh, town website. So all this will happen before your, your public hearing? Yes, before the public hearing, and uh, I hope by next week. It's about 50 pages, a lot of uh, information in it. And it's not all photos. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this would be one of the things up for discussion at the April town meeting. So I know. believe you're right. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, that's going to take a little while, I would think. So it may be that the meeting's work is done other than the report out and, uh, and presenting at, at town meeting. We have scheduled no other meetings. I guess there's an outside chance that town meeting will vote to extend our charter, whether we like that or not, but uh, that would be the only event for that one. Okay. Moving on. <clears throat> Yesterday, I attended the meeting of the MAPC Council, and it was uh, largely a business meeting. So they presented, uh, you know, the traditional officers' reports, an election of a couple of new uh, city rep city co-chairs, um, and I circulated the uh, the assessments. That another thing that was of interest. Uh, where they had the whole list of all municipalities in MAPC and what their past and present populations are, and I don't know how they calculated those populations. And ours indeed went down. The only good news is that our assessment went down, even though the overall assessment total for, for the MAPC went up. The budget's a little bigger, but ours our portion is down because of the population. Uh, there was a session of the new mayors, which was kind of interesting, including Michelle Wu from Boston, and uh, Greg Verga from Gloucester. Uh, Verga said a couple of interesting things. One I didn't completely understand, something about a new emphasis on their housing trust. So we might want to check in on what they're doing with that, if there's anything we can learn from it. But it sounded like he wanted to make a little more out of that than had been done in the past. And he also said he's interested in regional goals, which could involve us if they uh, uh, are in our bailiwick. Uh, he mentioned, I think, something about sewers, which may not be us because that's a pretty long reach to get to us. Um, and one interesting thing that's going to affect our traffic is they plan to have online registration for the beach parking. And I guess the hope is that if you can't get a reservation, you won't clog up 128, which would be nice. It's a good idea. Those are the high points. Yeah. Is that it, Tom? Yep. All right, thank you. Uh, anybody else have member items? We do. All right, um, I have a few. Um, first of all, regarding the um, housing choice initiative that we've all been talking about for months now. There are two deadlines that, um, that require compliance. And, and I think I'll address just to get a preview for our next meeting. There are two documents that need to be, that we need to complete for uh, the um, uh, HDC. One of them is uh, there's an information form that um, they that they require. We're an MBTA community. They need our information form 
it's it's on the website. I, I printed it out. I'll send it to all of you. It's pretty, you know, pretty perfunctory. They just ask a bunch bunch of questions about our, you know, Rockport and um, our zoning and what it is now. Um, we're not going to have be able to answer that we have any new zoning before I complete it. But there is a place to put in the uh, information that we have it, that it's on for town meeting at, you know, in, in May. So they'll be aware of that we, we have it. It's going to be on our town meeting. And the other thing I need to do as per their notice is they, they want to know that, that, I, that we have uh, informed the Board of Selectmen about the requirements for the um, uh, MBTA, the, house, the community's housing, in this case, the TOVOD, and what the requirements are. And they actually need a copy of the agenda to show that, that I've attended that meeting and the time of the attendance and the date of the attendance and that I made that presentation. So uh, yeah, it's, um, and uh, so I, I uh, just heard back from Mitch actually, as I said, I wanted to be on the agenda and it looks like um, I, um, I'm gonna be going there and uh, pretty soon, next, next couple of weeks, I'll be going to the Board of Sup Selectmen meeting and, and doing this and then I can fill out the form when that, once that's done. Yeah, that'll be, uh, yeah, May, uh, March 15th. Question, Jason. Yeah. I thought you had already done this. No, I haven't filled out the form yet. No, 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 no. I thought you had already been before the Board of Selectmen. You know what? I have, Harry, but I don't think I specifically talked about these items, you know, that, that they, I think they want me to talk about. So I, I talked in general about the need for this and everything, but I'm going to go there and hit the high points as quickly as possible. Yep. And, you know, we're talking about a 10 minute presentation. And then I can say, I can check the box on the form. Uh, so that's the other thing. The second thing regarding the, uh, the state is that we need to submit comments on the uh, proposed draft guidelines. Um, if you haven't seen those, you should definitely log on their website and get a copy and look at them because I am, I started this a few weeks ago, but I'm now going to be drafting a letter, uh, a comment letter to the state commenting on some of the requirements, specifically the 50 acres and the, uh, you know, total size, the 25 contiguous acres. And I did actually talk with Chris, what is it, Kutchman? Uh, Harry? Chris Clutchman. Clutchman. Cutchell. 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 No, Cl Chris Clutchman. What? He's Clutch from DHCD. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Speak with her. Yeah, not not our Chris. The yeah, this is <laughs> okay. many Chris's. And uh, I did speak with her, and I did mention that we are going to have comments, and that one of the things that we're going to be commenting on is that this the size that they're proposing is you know really. For Rockport, that would be a major, major change in our community. And she actually acknowledged that. Yeah, she said, yeah, that's definitely something that you know, you'll want to comment on. So for our next meeting in March, I will, before that, I'm going to send you a draft of what is going to be sent to um, the state. I'll ask you to look at it. Obviously, we want to make we want this to be a collaborative effort. Please look at it. If you have any comments or edits or anything you think we should do, we will be able to discuss those on uh, March, um, you know, March or March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. We'll be able to discuss those uh, changes uh, then because then the then the letter is going to have to go out uh, because the deadline is uh, March 30. So the the form that we need to fill out, the deadline's May 2nd, and this uh, letter, the deadline is March 30. But we'll be, dealing, we'll be dealing with both of them at our next meeting. 
on this. Who's going to be responsible for submitting that information back to DHCD? Say that again? Who's going to be responsible for submitting that information to DHCD? Oh, we are. We All are. Right. Good. Yeah. yeah, no, no, it's going to be us. Um, <clears throat> so then the third thing, um, member item is this um, this meet this uh, meeting quote unquote with the ZBA, um, which I heard about kind of secondhand from uh, Bob Viznick. Um, and I did speak to Alan Battistelli. Um, you know, as far as I know, there's no, um, there's nothing that they, uh, that anybody has a problem with, with what we've done. Um, and I basically told Alan that the, you know, sure we can have the meeting, but I told him that we cannot do any substantive changes to the bylaws. Um, after, you know, I don't care what anybody says at the meeting, uh, we can't make any substantive changes because we've gone through two public hearings and we've closed the public hearings. And we're, unless someone wants to pay the $1,800 that it costs to notice those public hearings, we're not changing anything this year. I also said this is a living document. If people have tweaks that they think should be made, um, then those aren't going to be till you know, the fall of this year or the spring of 2023. And if that's the case, we're gonna have, obviously have a new set of public hearings where those can be discussed by members of the public. The way I see the meeting with, a, a meeting with the ZBA is that essentially informational, it's a courtesy to another board um, and that's it. That's it. You know, everyone's had the opportunity to read these things over well before our public hearings and to make comments. And we didn't get any comments from anybody. And um, we cannot now legally start changing things in the draft bylaws without going through a whole new set of public hearings. So that's kind of where we are with that. If, Question? Yeah. Are we going to go ahead with all the revisions in May, or are we holding anything back? No, we're going everything. Okay. Oh, we're not doing the water supply overlay. Yeah, no, that's off the table. Yeah, that's okay. part of the warrant. But that's everything, so off. everything that's part of the warrant uh, was part of the warrant a week ago is going to be part of the warrant in May. We're not okay. doing anything out. So um, does anybody have any thoughts about having um a special meeting with the ZBA for informational purposes uh, on March 16th. Mark, when is it? Uh, I don't have time, but you know, I figure 6.30 or something on March On 16th. March 16th? Yeah. Okay. It'll be open to the public to view and everything. It's not gonna be a public hearing. And you know, maybe, maybe after I talk with Alan about the parameters, maybe the Maybe we won't need to have one, but you know, that's, that's what I'm thinking. March 16, informational, uh, hopefully people will, will read the draft bylaws. In fact, I, I have to get the most recent versions posted on the website. We'll read them in advance and maybe some of their questions will be answered simply by reading them, which often happens. But in any event, it's, you know, it's kind of a, it's an effort to be uh, collaborative uh, with the ZBA to let them know what's going on. And as I said, it would be information. Jason, is that the regular meeting date for ZBA? Um, I don't know, but that's a day that- um, I think they're later in the month. Stelly pro proposed the date. So okay. I think it's okay. Okay. All right, so that's what we'll do is I'll let them know. I have to obviously do a notice because it is a special meeting. 
and they'll have to do their notice. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk with him before we do any notices to make sure that everyone's still on board with, um, with doing that. Can you speak to him, Jason? Can you please um, reiterate your encouragement that all the members of the ZBA read the um, draft bylaws before the meeting? Oh, yeah, because otherwise it's a waste of time. Yeah. Can we give them a copy of Chris's PowerPoint? I could. I could give oh, them. That's pretty good. Um, I could watch his video. Yeah, I mean, there, there, I mean, there are lots of ways to get the information about the proposed changes. So that's why I'm not quite sure what the ZBA hopes to get out of this. Uh, but I think what we would want is they're all on our side. Oh, maybe we'll be roundly scolded. No, I think I actually. It would be nice I, if we made it as easy as possible for them to get what's going on. Well, it would be nice if they had attended our public hearings. <laughs> you know, the only DBA member I actually heard from from about a substantive thing with the bylaws, and it was a good, it was frankly a good catch, was uh, Peter Burkholtz. And he did um, call me and tell me about um, what look, it was simply like essentially a typographical error where we had both the ZBA and the planning board being the special permit authority in a section, I forget what it was, that it was, it was really the ZBA's, you know, uh, special permit. It wasn't anything we wanted to have anything to do with. And I guess what happened was at MAPC when they were early on when they were, you know, monkeying around with the special permits, had changed it to the planning board in one place, not changed it in another place. So there were conflicting provisions and there was some misnumbering. And, you know, he was absolutely right. And I talked to Chris, Chris made the changes. That kind of thing, you know, is great if someone can have their eyes on it and say, there's an, there's an actual error, sure. You know, that's that was and by the way, he was very positive about what we were doing. So I hope that that will be their comments too, that they'd be positive about. It. Okay, so the March 16, I'll do it. What what time? 6 30, 6 o'clock. Anybody have a preference? No, okay. it's an hour. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine it'll be more than an hour, six o'clock. Why don't we do it at six if that's okay? Uh, later is better for me, but I can do six. Can, can you do six? Yeah. Okay. All right. Six p.m. I'll talk to Alan about it. I don't know if he's in the audience here. Or I don't know if anybody from the ZBA is here, but I don't see anybody. Okay. Um. All right. That's. Oh, yeah. March thirteenth. I got an email from um, Thatch One Sixty Two Thatcher Road. The addition that we that we. Um, and they kind of sent, sent them back to the drawing board. The addition on the 10,000 square foot house, the bedroom addition for the walkthrough. They, uh, the architect, Julie, wanted to schedule the walkthrough for the 13th of March, no time specified, um, and said that the owners who don't live there would want to be there, which is fine. Uh, and I just wanted to poll you folks to see whether you know, the 13th, which is a Sunday, uh, probably in the afternoon would, would work for everybody. If it would, I can let them know that would be fun. Yeah, that's fine. It's the first day of daylight saving time. So that's right. We we'll all be an hour late. Our watches. Yeah. We'll all be an hour late. Right? <laughs> hour late or an hour early? Oh, that's right. <laughs> so 13, I have a conflict at four o'clock. You're talking about earlier, I guess. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to test daylight savings. I mean, it'll be. <laughs> I'm at 4 p.m., not 4 a.m. Right, not 4 a.m. It won't be 4 a.m. Um, no, kind of dark. Say, you know, one o'clock. And one o'clock. Way, we all don't have to show up at the same time. In fact, I would say everyone just show up when you want to. We'll have a. We'll give them like a time, you know, from one to three or something, and people can show up when they want to show up. If three of us show up and start talking about it, then we have an illegal meeting. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> we can't do that. So let's, let's make sure that if there are more than two people 
people there that there's no discussion um, about it. Um, so the window is one to three. One to three would work for me. I know that runs, but um, it's, I'll just let everybody let them know that. Yeah. Now, lastly, um, I did get uh, kind of secondhand. I guess Paul Orlando, our building inspector, has some question about six Gull Cove Lane, uh, which is a somewhat controversial lot on Gulf Cove Lane at the very end. And um, I, I did get a call from Bob Visnick about it, who's the lawyer who represents the, app, the owner applicant. I asked him to send me historical documents, i.e. the deed, maps, et cetera, which he did, which are, you know, Mary has them, they're available to anybody. We don't have any application from anybody at this point, but I just want to let you know that if you want to look at them, they're here. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk to Paul and see what he has in mind because he thinks that we may have some jurisdiction over this. It's not an ANR because this lot already exists. It's been there. actually two lots. Two lots? Yeah. I don't even know how many lots, but it's the lots already exist. They don't, they don't need to approve anything. And it's, it's just, I guess there's some kind of right of way there. It's a private road that, I, frankly, I don't even know what it's about, but he thinks we may come involved, may become involved. I know the Conservation Commission is currently dealing with this property and who knows where that'll go. Um, oh, last thing. Denise, do you have any update on the uh, grant application? The housing production plan RFP? Yes, yes. I think you saw my email to Mitch earlier this week. Yeah. No, yeah. no updates. Okay. Okay. I will send over, I'll send everybody his response, which I got. I just didn't send it. So and that's all I have for member items, which is enough. Anybody else have member items? Otherwise, we'll move to public comments, the second public comment period. No other member items. Okay, public comments, second public comment period. Okay, I have Toby with his hand up. Yeah. Toby, you're unmuted. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Uh, you referred to the uh, copy of the zoning changes. Uh, that was there last week. Uh, is it a different copy from what was put put there when you uh, advertised the public hearing? And is the copy that's there going to be changed in any way? Well, we did make changes based on what, what, but based on the input from the public hearing, yes. So the copy that's there now is the original copy or one with changes? Well, the changes, Toby, that we discussed as a board in public meetings after the public hearings were closed, as you remember, if you maybe you didn't attend, I don't know, but we did discuss the changes and decided that a number of them, including yours, would be incorporated into the uh, draft zoning, and those were incorporated, and um, that's what's going to be uh, more. That your did I answer your question? Um, not quite. Um, is it the same actual physical copy I was was there before the public hearing, or is it uh, one with with changes that you've made since? You mean on the website? No, I mean at the town clerk's office. I'm oh, you okay. know. Okay, I don't think you have. Um, I don't know if that has been forwarded to the town clerk yet because of this delay in the, uh, we just had this conversation last week about the warrant and whether it would be on the warrant for April and it was decided it wouldn't. So what the town clerk has now is not final version. They, it will, they will have the final version 
uh, maybe even tomorrow. I see. All done. Um, yeah. That answer your question? Uh, yes, it does. And about uh, six Gulf Cove Lane, uh, when that property was sold, uh, it was advertised in the newspaper as being five lots, which I don't believe it was on the assessor's maps, which is what the town goes by. And uh, Gull Cove Lane on uh, those maps, you know, goes all the way down to the cove uh, in back of what was Mary Knowlton's house, that being the one just above Row Point. Uh, it never physically went there. And so it might very well be that uh, your board would be asked whether that was adequate as a road for frontage. Uh, the Conservation Commission is in the process of a legal wrangle with uh, those people and their application. Uh, you might touch base with them. And there's also the matter of, uh, of uh, what might go into the water, uh, which doesn't concern you at this point. They want docks. The Conservation Commission foolishly said yes to that. And there is no underlying Chapter 91 license for that property. Okay, well, uh, thank you. Any other public comment? That's everyone, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we ended somewhat early compared to our prior meetings. Uh, unless anybody has wants to talk about anything else, does anybody have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, motion to adjourn by Tom. Seconded. Second. Seconded by Denise. Roll call vote. Peter. Aye. Harry. Aye. Denise. Aye. And Tom. Aye. And all vote in favor. Meeting adjourned at uh, 730, 729. And we're, we're done. Thank you all. And see you on. Thank you on the 17th and you'll be getting some stuff in between. Okay. Thanks much. Bye. Thank so you. See you all. Go on.